We had we had some somber news. We had some sad news in the world of football. Mino Raiola, one of the most iconic figures, and it's incredible because he doesn't have to kick a ball to be one of the most well-known iconic figures in football, has sadly passed away, age 54. And he's been battling an illness for quite some time. And, and uh, you know, whether he was a controversial figure in the game, nonetheless, but you look at his book of clients and how many big players continue to sign with him now. These these golden boys of football that are making noise, they continue to sign with him because one thing you have to say about him, he represented his players very, very well and always did everything he could to get them the best deal he absolutely could. So he's a, he is a legend of the game. He's one of those, I'd say, three super agents that really stole the headlines in the last 20 years of football. Jake, I wanted to come to you with this one. Before we talk about really agents and talk about Mino, we talk about the story that broke a little early, right? Two days before, about a day and a half before the story broke that he'd passed away. He then came out releasing a statement saying, no, I'm still here. Um, as, as, as chief journalist here at Optus Sport, what, how difficult is it as a journo when, when these news stories are breaking? And do you have this moral battle between making sure it's 100% correct, but also people expect you to be first to the party, right? And release the story first. I think it's a really interesting one, especially when you talk about from up to sports perspective, when you're covering a story that's on the other side of the world, firstly, what I'd say is, I mean, this story breaking early, I mean, you can't, there's no bigger sort of almost embarrassment for a journalist mm. than than breaking that news of, of the fact someone's died. I mean, it has mm. such far reaching consequences in terms of, I believe there was a, a comment from a doctor at the hospital who basically said, we had Mina Rayola's son calling saying, is my dad, is, is it real? Is it fake news? Wow. And I think that's, that really just points to just how big of a thing this is and just how, mm sort of sad the whole situation is. And I think the thing in journalism is, I mean, credibility is so incredibly important. And I think a story like this, I mean, when you're trying to cover it, I mean, it's let's be honest, Optus Sport doesn't have contacts in a hospital in Italy, like Mm, we're on the other side of the world. But you rely on... So, people, reporters, um, newsbreakers on the ground to to, to do their due diligence and to get a story right. Um, Mm. I don't think it's necessarily about being first when you're when you're in a situation like we are but you I mean you don't necessarily want to get left behind by a news story and I mean reducing it to a news story is is I mean it's almost you don't really want to it's it's, it's so much bigger than that but ultimately mm. at the end of the day that this story itself um, was largely broken and sort of globalized by a, a newsbreaker in Italy who I mean had to backtrack enormously and it was clear just how upset he was about it I mean he's basically mm. put himself in Twitter jail for a few weeks he's, he's taking yeah. some time to think about himself and I mean that's what it is he's got the credibility this guy's got 400 thousand followers on Twitter that's how credible he is so you as mm. as someone on the other side of the world we rely on journalists and someone else in our industry to, to really do their job right and nail it and, and do it I mean obviously you, you want to double check every story yourself you want to be be 100% accurate but I mean in the global world that we live in in the social media age I mean news spreads like wildfire and when someone with the runs on the board says something and it's backed up by someone else who's got the runs on the board I mean what, what, what are you supposed to do I mean admittedly like it's tough and you should wait until until the family confirms it but if the entire world is is talking about a story you don't really want to be left behind yeah makes sense must be a, must be a difficult one i think for him you know really we talk about whether you want to be first i find that hard to believe because for him now that if if that was the reason for breaking it so quick it's it's gone it's backflipped completely and his credibility has probably been shot massively from this but let's the, the real big point about this is that the world has lost Mina Rayola and one of the, one of the big super agents of the game you know we talk about Mendes who's who's uh, managed so many portuguese players and there's a few others that have really stolen the headlines but i wanted to speak to you about it tommy this whole idea of the super agent and you know he was quite vocal as well he, I remember one of these most recent ones a year ago was about Erling Haaland with Borussia Dortmund and if they didn't cooperate to try and sell him to a club he said uh, I'll, I'll let him go to Bayern Munich on a free if you're not careful at the end of his contract you know he had that power he wasn't afraid to stick it to these big clubs and I think media sometimes twists these super agents as being the bad guys but as a footballer you've experienced it you've experienced the modern age of football where these clubs have so much money they have so much power do, do players need these agents to stick it to them to step up and to really stand up for the little guy? I I think the game has uh, you know has has come that far that uh, you know there's so many rules and regulations. So, so just from that perspective, you need someone mm-hmm. who's on top of that. You know, so so that's where mm-hmm. the agent fits in. Then uh, you know it all depends on you know where you know if I was a player and I was picking an agent, you know I I wouldn't necessarily want to pick one of those agents because that sort of commands that you are a player of that stature, um, you know because you know they've obviously got to that level by you know by luck by either getting you know by 
you know, getting uh, the right players when they were young and then you build a career and you build a reputation and slowly, um, and you're obviously good at what you're doing as well. Um, but, but ultimately, you want an agent that has, the, you know, someone you can trust, um, that has obviously the, the best, your best interest at heart. Uh, and, and again, at the right time. So my agent um, was Paul Stratford, so he's always the, also the agent for, for Wayne Rooney. And, and he got into some trouble over the whole Wayne Rooney deal where, you know, he was, you know, just fine for, for having poached him from, you know, some of his previous agents and, and, um, and, and had to sit out. He, you know, he, he got his license revoked for, for a couple of years. But for me, you know, you want your agent to be a little bit like, a, you know, a pit bull. You want your agent to be on your side, but going hard at clubs and, and, and again, you know, fight for your interest. So I, I don't really care if the agent is looked at as a, you know, as a bad guy or I just want my relation to him that yeah. I can trust that. And I think that's where that, that's just the whole essence of it. Like whatever everyone else says, it doesn't really matter unless he's, you know, he's fighting for your interest. Mm. And and for you, do you think as, as a player, it's different when I guess you're a young player, you look for an agent to maybe give you opportunities or get you trials at clubs or whatever. But when you're already a superstar, when you're already very well known, you're earning a lot of money and you're doing all this, when you select your agent, because you hear of footballers changing their agents throughout their career, what are you selecting the agent based on? Is it, When they're coming to you, are they having a conversation saying, I'll get you the best contract you can possibly get? I'll get you a long contract or more money? Or, or What are you selecting your agent based on? You know, I always used to like, you know, a, a holistic approach. I would say I had, um, first of all, you, you want to know, you know, what's, the, what's the agency? You know, what can they supply of services? Uh, where do you rank? You know, mm. have they got 10 players? Do you rank number nine? Yeah. Uh, because then you, you, you know, what gonna, what time that, you know, you'll get some young up and coming, uh, red shirt guy <laughs> that's going to look after you or, or, or are you going to be, you know, the main man and they're going to put all their eggs in your basket and, and, and are really going to push your name. Uh, so I think that's the first thing. And then you, you build a rapport, you, you know, can I trust these people and, and, and this guy? Because I've seen, I've seen the other side of it. I've seen players at the sort of, you know, bottom end of, 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 of the league and, and, you know, they're just being taken advantage of. You know, the, the agents would could just call them. They knew their contract was up, you know, a week before. You know they'll get a call and and they'll take their cut and and wouldn't really care, you know. But they needed them for the negotiations, uh, and and that's the different side of it. So so, you know, if you are Haaland, Ronaldo, you know, you got no option. You got to you got the pick of the litter. Whoever you trust and whoever yeah. can come up with the best package for you. But but if you're further down the line. That's where you have to be smart. You know, you have to pick. You, you really have to pick the people you can trust and and who has to do your best interests at heart. So it's not easy. You know, it's a. I feel for some of the the young players because everyone, you know, it's, it's like the politicians we're here now with the election. You know, they they can do everything for you, but but when it really comes when it really comes to it, will they do that? And I think that's where you know that that's the big question. Did you enjoy that? There's so much more, so why not hit subscribe and download the Optus Sport app.